Good morning, uh, everybody, and good morning, uh, panelists. Uh, I hope uh, everybody's having a very productive uh, Infra Day. Uh, for those that don't know me, my name is uh, Aitor Alaba. I'm based in New York, and I'm heading the Texas Infrastructure Finance Practice for uh, Latin America. And today, together with my colleague, uh, Ben Kohler, we will be moderating this, this panel on renewable uh, PMGD in, uh, in Chile. Um, for me, that I'm a professional that is focused in Latin America, I'm, I'm super excited of, of this panel because I think this is the first time that we have a Latin focus panel in, in, in a Texas Infra Day. I think clearly that's a reflection of the importance that the region has um, in, in our clients, both investors. We see investors that have a larger share of their portfolio um, with assets in this region and also for our sponsors client, uh, definitely in Latin America, especially on the renewal space, it's, it's really in the radar for the, for the growth. Um, I, I hope that the, you know, the topic will be interest for, for the audience for a number of reasons. Um, I think the PMGD uh, scheme, which is basically distributed generation um, in Chile is quite innovative and probably there's some lessons that could be learned for the other areas of the, uh, in the globe. And, and secondly, because you know this topic is 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 putting together two themes in the power market. Uh, one is the the energy transition to greener uh, energy matrix, and 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 also you know the distributed generation, which is a topic that is becoming more and more important in the in the U.S. and and, and so. Um, without uh, further delay, because I think the interesting of this panel are the views of our uh, panelists. I'm gonna. I'm going to introduce uh, this group of, uh, of professionals. Uh, all of them are and have been key partners of, of Natixis in our efforts in, in the PMGD space. So very briefly, we have with us uh, Candela Machi from, uh, from Buenos Aires. She works at Standard & Poor's and has been the, the lead analyst uh, in a number of transactions that we have, uh, we have rated. We have uh, Thierry, Thierry Carcel from, from Spain. He is the CEO of, of Reden. Uh, Reden is an IPP that has done, um, uh, has invested in a couple of portfolios of PMGD in Chile, apart from other things that they're doing in, in other areas. We have uh, David Flory uh, from the US. David is, is heading project finance and, and Sonetics, again, a very large uh, IPP. And they have also invested in one PMGD portfolio uh, in, in Chile. And finally, we have uh, Juan Pablo Rafeto, uh, based in Santiago de Chile. Uh, he works at MetLife, and he's heading the, the LATAM infrastructure um, practice. So I'm sure their views will be very useful for the, for the audience. Uh, we have views from sponsor side, investor side, and also from, from rating the agency. Before I, we jump into the Q&A, um, I think it will be worth for the audience to give some um, Initial background of what is PMGD because obviously for us is is you know it's 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 an it's a no-brainer because we spend a lot of time on this. Um, so basically, PMGD is, is a scheme that was put in place in Chile, you know, more than 10 years ago, trying to promote um, this utility scale distributed generation. When I say utility scale, is that this is not uh, you know roof uh, projects. Uh, so we're talking about uh, project seats uh, between three and, and and nine megas. Um, the main reason why Chile wanted to push this type of projects, uh, it's twofold. Obviously, it helps on achieving their, their green uh, objectives and the decarbonization of their economy. But also, more importantly, um, it's to alleviate some transmission constraints uh, by putting closer the generation and, and the demand. Uh, you can avoid uh, unnecessary transmission investments and transmission bottlenecks. So. That's why you know Chile has embarked in this in this scheme, and and the backbone of the scheme is basically what is called the stabilized price. Is that all these projects are entitled to receive um, uh, a price that that is not a fixed price, so it's a little more tricky, and that requires a little bit of, of of analysis. 
but it's a stable price that kind of tracks the, the average spot price in the market, but also the average uh, price in all the PPAs in, in the country. So in a nutshell, while the deal is not, um, you know, with a fixed price, with a traditional PPA, it's, it's a deal, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tariff that, as its name says, is, it's stable by, by and, and it should not move dramatically in the, in the, in the short term. Um, and any investment analysis, both on the sponsor side and on the, on the lender side, requires an understanding of how this tariff, uh, how this tariff uh, works. Um, and just final, finalizing, you know, on, on, on Natix's side, you know, this is a market that probably until three years ago was a little bit under the radar of, uh, of inter international um, uh, institution like us. It was basically a market done by small Chilean uh, institutions. Uh, we started looking at this, as, as I said, three years ago, trying to understand the scheme, trying to come with a tailor-made solution that could help our clients. Uh, we invested a lot of time and were able to um, have been able to put forward a very strong product. So far, we have closed uh, six deals, which is more than 500 million. Um, and we're working in a, in a number of, of additional mandates. So, you know, we think we're really at the, at the front, uh, the forefront of this, uh, of this, uh, of this market. So again, uh, the interest part of the panel is are the views of all these uh, panelists. So uh, Ben, I, I, I'll let you take the, the floor and, and guide us through the, through the Q&A. Great, thank, thank you, Aitor, um, and good day to everyone participating in uh, Infra Day this year. Um, and really thanks to, uh, to each of our panelists for your participation and, and taking the time in this annual event. Um, as, as Aitor said, we've been working quite intensively for a few years now in, in PMGD, um, and each of you has been a really important partner to us in that process. We, we, we hope likewise that, that we've been um, uh, helpful and, and value-added uh, partners for you. Um, we've got a, a series of questions that um, we'll run through, and I, I think we'll probably try to give around five to seven minutes to, uh, to, to each of them. Um, the goal is to have uh, an open discussion and keep this relatively dynamic, even though we unfortunately can't do the event in, in person this, this year. Um, so the, the first general topic is um, really about uh, beginnings. Um, and um, uh, our, our question is, is what compelled you initially to start looking at the PMGD space? Um, what benefits did you see in PMGDs for country for for Chile as as a country, um, and and what role uh, did uh, your institution's green priorities um, have in 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 shaping that motivation to look at PMGDs? Um, per perhaps it would be interesting to hear first from uh, the sponsors on on this point. Yeah, well, if you want me to jump in. Um... Uh, very clearly, uh, Chile was a geography we were interested in, uh, but I would say that uh, if it was not for PMGD, maybe we wouldn't have gone investing in Chile. Why? Because PMGD is kind of an hybrid in between the merchant price and, uh, and, and, and feed-in tariff. Not feed-in tariff, of course, but it's not merchant price. And we wanted to have a kind of a less risky situation in a country that was new for us. So PMGD was the, the right in between for us to take the decision. And also because PMGD is looking at uh, small projects uh, um, between three to nine megawatts AC, you know, it was easy for us as a company to invest um, our own money. So we went to Chile in order to say, okay, well, we can learn in a non too risky environment to, to build to develop, to co-develop, to buy also some uh, some projects in Chile uh, without uh, starting with a 100 megawatt project, you know. So it was good to learn about the region. Chile, as you know, is a very long country. <laughs> it's 7,000 kilometers long. So so basically it was easy for us to start like that with a few projects in different areas. And uh, it worked well and uh, we're still there and we're still developing. So that was, that was the main reason, none too risky. I understood. Um, David, w wondering if uh, you have anything to add to that from Synetics' perspective. Yeah, thanks, Ben. Well, hello, everyone. You know, the mandate from our sponsor, uh, Infrastructure Investments Fund, is to invest in OECD member countries. 
And so when we were looking at Latin America, investing in Chile makes a lot of sense. Um, in addition, Synetics is really very comfortable um, uh, investing in and developing smaller projects in the range of five to 10 megawatts around the world. Um, and those are often projects that some of the larger solar shops tend to ignore. Um, but for us, you know, when we look at PMGDs, we think that Synetics brings an edge that we can leverage our global EPC and financing capabilities um, and bring those to bear on, this, on these smaller distributed generation uh, projects um, and kind of marry up our nimble culture with our deep um, local presence. So that's why we feel comfortable um, uh, investing pretty strongly in the PMGD market. Thanks, David. Um, and uh, Juan Pablo, um, maybe turning turning the focus a, a little bit over to the the investor side. Um, we understand that um, uh, MetLife, like Natixis, is placing a really strong emphasis um, uh, over the past couple of years in in financing the transition to a greener energy economy. I'm wondering if you could speak a little bit to that and uh, how that may have fueled uh, MetLife's uh, engagement in the space. Sure, sure. Uh, hi, uh, Ben. Hi, everyone. Thank you for the invitation to Natixis. I hope all, all, everyone is well and safe. Uh, so, yes, um, just, just building up on what Thierry and David mentioned, uh, for us, you know, uh, being here in the region, being here in Chile in particular, um, you know, we, we uh, look at the this sector as being one, showing high growth, a lot of projects being built uh, within, within a very, let's say, interesting scheme that the government has devised for the industry. Uh, and also within a, a framework which you, you, you don't have a lot of PPAs, uh, true PPAs available in projects. No? So it's a, it's a good, good way and a very clever way to, to finance them. Um, and you know, uh, obviously, uh, you know, we, we have a, a, a very important and increasing focus on, on green and sustainable projects. We, we launched even a, a more formal policy uh, recently, uh, and you know, it goes very well in line. Uh, alongside other renewable projects uh, that we do in the region. This fits very well within the policy in which we're able to invest, you know, in green, uh, green renewable energy. Um, even to the fact that we, we just issued a green bond at the mid-life level, and, and that, you know, is one source we're using to fund, uh, to fund this, this project. No? Great. Thank you all for, for, for the answers um, to, to that. Thanks, thanks Juan Pablo. Um, maybe moving on to, to, to the next topic uh, here. Um, if I can paraphrase uh, Thierry's answer to the last question a little bit, um, um, it, it sounds like you're saying, Thierry, that uh, PMGDs, um, they're not too risky um, because they're not merchant, clearly. Um, and on the other hand, there's still interesting returns there um, because it's it's not perhaps in the hyper-competitive contracted uh, uh, market. So they, they seem to fall into sort of a, a Goldilocks uh, zone for you, not too cold, not too hot. Um, and, uh, you know, I think that's a good segue into the next topic, which is which is how, how do we comp uh, PMGDs uh, to other power projects, um, you know, given that I, I think a lot of institutions tend to look at um, contracted versus merchant in somewhat of a binary type sense. Um, be interesting, interested to hear from from all of you uh, on on that point. How, how you think about where PMGDs land in the middle there? Well, if you want, I carry on. <laughs> well, uh, financing wise. Uh, um, I think that uh, PMGD, they all have the same uh, behavior, if I may say so. That is, say that's a quite a homogeneous a population of projects. So you can benefit from the size of big projects, because when we talk to people like you, of course, uh, uh, we need to have size in order to, to, to have good conditions. Um, so we benefit from the size, but also we've got the benefit of diversification. That is, say, it mitigates there is quite a lot. On top of, of course, the stabilized price, the fact that there is a link to the US dollar, which is very important because in Latin America, uh, um, as Juan Pablo said, uh, uh, that's very important to have, you know, uh, this kind of, you, you need to, to, to choose very carefully uh, uh, the country you're going uh, with. So Chile is a good situation. 
and PMGD you can have size, but with diversification. And I think that's really the the, the, the winning situation for a good financing. So you can have more leverage than a pure merchant uh, uh, a project in another country. And at the end of the day, we're all IPP. We look at return on equity more than uh, anything else. Oh, also. Great, thank, thank, thanks Thierry. Um, does, does anyone else wanna, wanna take a swing at that one? Yeah, I, maybe I think just... So. Uh, Sorry, for a, from, um, from a credit perspective, if you want, um, what's the difference between these projects and, and other power transactions is precisely what Terribio was saying. It's a market risk exposure to us. So what's, what are the typical risks for this kind of transactions? So you have a similar level of uh, technological risk for most of the renewals, particularly if we're talking about solar projects. Then you have resource exposure, that in this case, it's also associated to, to the availability of, of this uh, natural resource. But the main difference is the approach to market risk. So how we view this is uh, this regulated price as a kind of um, uh, inherent stickiness that would, would allow uh, prices to adjust more gradually than what you will see if you have a project that is fully exposed to market forces. That is what happens when you are fully exposed to dispatches. So this uh, dynamic in the mechanic of the calculation of the regulated price is what adds some level of uh, stability and predictability over the cash flows, which uh, diminishes the amount of the market risk exposures, which from a credit perspective, of course, is, is positive. So that's to, from a credit perspective, to me, the main difference is something in between a fully contracted project with a long tenor PPA dollar denominated, and then a transaction that has exposure to spot market forces. Yeah, and Candela, we've we've really appreciated uh, your team's ability to uh, drill down um, uh, into that that middle ground. Um, you know, we recognize that that's not something that um, you know every 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 rating agency is necessarily able to do in in, in detail in, in in a given space um, or, or in the PMGD space rather. Um, not sure if uh, if David or uh, Juan Pablo uh, would like to speak to that. Um. Sure. Yeah, uh, I think Terry and Candela really nailed it um, in terms of the advantages that we also see. Uh, price stickiness, diversification, the link to the U.S. dollar, those are all really important to us as well. Um, you know, more broadly, and Synetics is also um, – constructing a 172 megawatt project uh, there in, in the country. Um, and so our experience in developing and designing and financing that project has really helped to introduce us to uh, the industry there, the, the key players, the regulatory regime, just um, how, how, the, how the industry works. And so it's a launching point for us to go from really big projects to the distributed generation pretty seamlessly. Um, so that's part of how our, you know, our bigger strategy in, in Chile helps us feel comfortable with, with PMGDs as well. Ben, on, on my side, uh, just to complement what my colleague said. Um, so, yeah, basically we've been very active in the renewal space globally, uh, and we use, obviously, the best practices from our U.S. home office uh, to apply everywhere uh, to the region, and we have that more, let's say, normal type of, more common type of uh, renewable projects in the region without this scheme. So, you know, I think one, one feature that we really valued a lot here, besides what they just mentioned, is um, the possibility of having a strong structure to compensate for the, the lack of a perfect, let's say, PPA, the fixed price. So that, that uh, you know, that combination of perhaps a higher equity component, initially at least, um, that a, a structure that allows uh, the, um, the the debt to be uh, you know adapt, adjusted in some way uh, to the potential for, for some variability revenues and cash flows in the future. That, I think that's that's key for us. Uh, we've been monitoring this space for a long time and you know very selectively looking at the best sponsors, best deals uh, in in the space. Uh, and I think this is, is very important. The combination of strong structure with a with a, with a very proven technology, uh, very no large, no large sponsors, 
we in a good a good environment in terms of Chile and its regulation. So, so you know, this this uh, combined, I think, with obviously attractive returns, that that makes a, a winning combination. Great, thanks, David and and Juan Pablo. Um, I think one of the themes that I'm hearing from uh, three out of the four of you uh, is that. Um, uh, a background in Chile um, uh, kind of prepared you for the, the the analytical masterclass that was DMGD, right? That really knowing the system in, in a lot of detail um, prepared you for that. And then Gary, I'm I'm, I'm sure that Redden's broad base of international experience um, was 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 very instructive as as well. Even if uh, your your activities in Chile are more limited uh, to, uh, to to PMGD. Um, so, uh, you know, effectively, um, uh, I, I think it makes a lot of sense how, how you were convinced. Um, one of the things that we've found to be key in, in our own processes has been, uh, okay, ITOR and Ben and, 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 and the team, um, uh, we might have gotten there in terms of our investment thesis, but how do you package that? Uh, so that it makes sense in uh, you know a couple of bullets for your investment committee or its equivalent, um, and of course th this gets a little bit um, uh, 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 internally focused. So no no need to to answer the question in, in tons of detail, but um, I'm curious as to to how um, uh, each of you can comment on, on on how you sold that to folks that might not be uh, energy nerds to the same degree that uh, we on this on this panel are. Well, I, uh, if you want, I can answer that very easily. It's, uh, of course, all the mechanism of PMGD uh, did help a lot, as I said. But also, uh, uh, all the, the other mitigants to that were um, uh, the commitment. The, 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 f first of all, the legal security, you know. Uh, you need to be sure that uh, they're gonna, not going to change the law or not too often or not too heavily, you know. And so Chile offers that security, you know. And um, also, well, uh, the uh, commitment of Chile uh, towards the, uh, the uh, green uh, renewable energy and also to the PMG. And that was very important because, you know, if we have a common goal, that's okay. If we don't have a common goal one day or another, we will have a problem, you know. Um, and the two or the, pro well, at least one main driver uh, for, uh, uh, Having a positive answer from our committee was the price projection. Let's say, as you said, uh, PMGD are a bit above the uh, merchant price or whatever, which is uh, good for us, but maybe a kind of a risky situation if there is a change in the uh, policy of the of of the um, of Chile. But with the price projection, and they are not more than projection, that gave us comfort enough to say, well, in the if the worst comes to the worst. Uh, the difference is not going to be that big. So I think that's uh, really the way we convinced our community. I, ben, I think I, one important topic that uh, Thierry was mentioning, and maybe this is a segue to, to other topics we, we have in the panel, is the, um, is the regulatory uh, stability. I, I, I tend to believe that, um, you know, Usually, usually politicians don't do too crazy stuff. But when I when I've seen or when I have witnessed in the past changes in regulation, is because something was not really adding value to the economy or to the country. Um, it was mentioned before, and this is something that needs to be understood by the audience that you know Chile is a very long and narrow country, uh, which creates huge issues you now from a transmission point of view. So. Um, you know, PMGD is, is is helping the country to reduce that, and also obviously helping on the, the on the green uh, initiative. You no, know? so so maybe it will be good to, to hear from 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 the panelists uh, their views uh, regarding the regulatory stability. Um, Chile, um, there has been recent changes in, in PMGD, um, so maybe it will be it will be interesting to, to hear from them. So I I don't know who wants to take this. To, uh, you know. I think this is a question for everybody. Uh, I'd be particularly interested in, in hearing from Candela, maybe uh, first on, on on that one, if if you don't mind, Candela. Um, I, I know you've sure. done some significant um, regulatory benchmarking work um, throughout LATAM. Yeah, of course, Ben. 
So let me start by saying that overall, we assess the utilities regulatory framework in, in Latin America as supportive. And this is, of course, there are some exceptions, but this is because uh, most of the regulations in the countries in the different region allows for timely recovery of uh, operating costs and capital, and, and they are considered as relatively stable and predictable uh, to topics that are very important to us. And we base this regulatory risk assessment on four indicators that includes uh, regul regulatory stability, regulators independence, rate setting mechanisms, and there's some future developments that it's basically if there is any expectation of uh, significant change, uh, such as uh, we've seen in Mexico a couple of years ago with the energy reform, or in the case of Chile with these, uh, the release of the targets for, for the renewable energy. The four scores in Chile particularly are considered as positive from a credit perspective. And this positions the country as one of the strongest in the region in this aspect. And this is because uh, we are talking about a regulatory framework that has uh, decades of, of history and in our view is very transparent and predictable. We are talking about a system that has uh, operated well under both expansionary but also recession cycles that it's very important. And during several administrations, uh, even from different political parties, and we haven't seen significant modifications that could put at risk the country's The remuneration system is also very transparent. Of course, there have been changes as in, in all countries and, and all around the regions. It's, it's not only from Latin America, but um, overall our view is that there is a prudent uh, operating cost and capital recovery. And we see a low probability for adverse changes to this uh, pricing regime or contracts in the foreseeable future. So that uh, makes us conclude that Chile is, is one of the countries in the region with the strongest regulatory framework. Thanks, thanks, Candela. Um, very, very compelling answer. Um, uh, you know, I, I think the background here, it, it, of, of course, is Chilean regulatory stability. Um, but then all of us have also been dealing with the fact that there have been certain marginal adjustments uh, to the PMGD regime that have been underway, that at least in, in the Texas's view have been uh, quite manageable, but you know that, that, that has put the regulatory discussion really first and foremost in, in a lot of our internal process. It was, it was, it was kind of the first thing that we had to, uh, to, to address. Um, not sure, David or Juan Pablo, if, if you have uh, anything to, to, to add on this point. I, I can add if you want to, to, to Candela's comment, uh, your comment. So I would say yes. So, you know, being here in Chile, we have a regional office here in Chile for many, many years following the sector. And I can, yeah, I can tell you that Chile is, it is probably the most uh, uh, example for the other countries in terms of regulation um, for the region. And uh, obviously, the highest rate country for the region. So it's really those two, th two things combined are very are very strong incentives and strong elements for us to consider in our committees and our, our decision. And again, obviously, with all this uh, first social crisis last year, then the COVID, you see some uh, some noise, some mm -hmm. changes that we think those are going to be managed well overall in general with participation from the private sector, uh, with the consensual agreements in general, uh, small adjustments, uh, for example, the, the one that's going on right now, the DS88 uh, adjustment to the PMGD scheme, I think that has been discussed for nearly two years now, and we expect that to be uh, enacted very soon. Um, what, what's, uh, what's being done there is quite logic and, and makes make sense to, to the sector and to the financing structures. And, and again, the structures that we are looking at in terms of financing are contemplating that, that possibility already embedded in the structure in a way to keep metrics in a healthy way. Um, and, and beyond that, I would say, uh, yes, we are waiting for that co confirmation, uh, but in general, we expect uh, that to, to, be, to be supported. And, and again, correcting things that are smaller, more like uh, avoiding, a bit, uh, more like speculation of some players. Um, I think that's very important for, for these uh, investments in PNGD is that they are on the right side of the, the say of the, um, of the of the, the spectrum within the potential different governments in the future, different regulations, 
you know, it's a smaller projects, green project, it's good energy, all those things are really, I mean, the price is, is going to be adjusted downwards alongside with the PPAs and the spot price. So really, you don't see a lot of angles where you would like to dramatically change the sector uh, for any reason. Thanks, Juan Pablo. Uh, David, you want to sure, touch that sure. one? Yeah, I'll, I'll chime in a little bit. Uh, so overall, you know, Synetix really appreciates the macro stability of of, um, of Chile. It's it's really the first thing that we assess when we look at entering a new country, um, and Chile checks all those boxes for us. I think the the four factor framework that Candela just described for us is really powerful and and right on. Um, at Synetix, I don't think we're quite as as eloquent in, in expressing <laughs> how robust the system is um, as she just laid out for us, but we also come to the same very same conclusions that this is a over the long term, and that's what we're in, we're a long term investor. Over the long term, the regulatory framework is robust, it's stable, it's it's worth relying on. We have um, we have important senior, significant you know local presence. Um, in Chile as well to kind of keep monitoring and keeping engaged. I think that's important. Um, but that's really why we feel very comfortable with uh, overall the, the long-term regulatory regime in, in Chile. Um, and, and we don't expect after this uh, recent regulatory change, we, we don't expect right now any, any further change of, of any significance. That's great. Thanks, thanks, David. Um, and and agree. Candela's framework has been really important for <clears throat> for for us as well, and 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 in in our in, uh, approval process. Um, so I'm just hearing a couple themes from uh, you know this this topic. Um, first and foremost, fundamental value to a system, right? Um, and I think we've all learned this in in years of infrastructure. <clears throat> um, you're not adding value to a system or to a counterparty, um, your contracts and your revenues are by definition uh, at risk. So is there you know, a collective will um, to, to have PMGDs um, uh, being built out in Chile? The, the answer you know, for us is, is clearly yes, um, uh, given that it, it really does contribute to uh, uh, the grid stability, distributed gen, um, and green goals of, of the country. Um, it, it sounds like this, the second is, of course, regulatory stability. Um, and um, you know, I think that's something that we all agree on uh, in in Chile. Um, as, as Juan Pablo said, we're we're all baking in the uh, small adjustments to the PMGD regime to to our structures and and to to our expectation uh, expectations. Um, w one thing that um, I, I didn't hear from 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 the group, uh, but that might be useful to clarify for. Uh, the, the audience is uh, that when we say regulatory stability, we don't mean that in Chile the rules never change. Uh, what we mean is that when the rules do change, there's typically a grandfathering regime or almost always a grandfathering regime that allows an investor to benefit from the rules as they were at the time that the investment decision uh, was made. Um, and, you know, I think that allowed all of us um, to uh, even before those adjustments were finalized, um, to depend on the fact that they would be there, um, and you know that thesis has has been quite borne out in terms of uh, what what's happened since. Um, in terms of um, uh, portfolio development, just switching switching gears a, a bit. Um, once you've uh, decided you're going to invest in PMGD. Convinced um, uh, investment committees and, and the equivalent. Um, what does it look like building out uh, a PMGD portfolio? <clears throat> because we've we've all talked now about um, the geographical diversification, which is an investment positive. It's a country positive, but it also means that you need to develop a bunch of small projects that might be scattered throughout the country. Um, so I think that's that's mostly a question for uh, for for the sponsors. Um, David uh, Thierry. Yeah, yeah. So for Synetics, I think the challenge is just managing um, a diverse group of of small smaller projects. Diversity has its benefits, but it also adds complexity. Um, and so the key is how do we organize? Um, uh, how do we organize to execute efficiently? Um, I think it starts with having a a senior and significant presence in Santiago. 
um, that we can leverage. It starts by having um, credibility with um, key advisors and, and counterparties um, and, and developing those relationships so that candid, quick conversations can happen. Um, it's all about removing uh, the friction of doing these, these small, mul a, multiple, uh, a multitude of, of smaller deals. So that's what we're focusing on. We're trying to, to streamline. We're trying to you know, aim for speed um, in execution. Um, and it starts from a solid base um, in Santiago. Yeah, if you want me to, 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 to well, I do agree 100% with uh, what uh, David just said. Uh, uh, let, let me talk about our experience, Redden. We were not present in, uh, in Santiago two years ago when we decided to go. So uh, we've done exactly what David said. We, we, we found some people that were there uh, with a senior representation and uh, credibility. I think that credibility in that world of uh, development, our DNA, we are developers. We started developing in France, but then Spain and then other countries. You know, you're, you, there's many developers uh, that have no credibility, you know, so it was very important for us to know the local environment. And uh, we've made some uh, good deals with uh, some uh, local developers. Uh, we bought some uh, uh, projects and we bought even some assets in order to speed up to have a, 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 first, uh, a first portfolio that could allow us then to have our own development. And I think that's exactly about credibility and, uh, and, and, and seriousness at the end. Yeah, I, I, I think um, credibility is, 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 is a good word, um, you know, that, that, that you both, you both used um, because it's, it's definitely um, uh, a key component of um, our decisions about the sponsors that, that, that we can work with in Chile and the PMGD space. Um, you know, there are plenty of folks that have the idea that, oh, there's, I can build PMGDs or I have a pipeline. Um, but getting those through the permitting process and getting to a critical mass and, and having the boots on the ground needed to um, build a solid portfolio, be on the sites is, is, is really another um, uh, barrier to entry beyond just having, having the idea. Um, so would, would note that with, uh, with, with, with both of uh, uh, your firms, um, we, we of course had uh, broader experience in other regions. Um, we were able to see your, um, uh, delivery of, uh, of, of, of successful projects, um, and then really worked a lot with your local teams, I think beyond what we do for another single asset project, uh, but work to really understand what that, that process looks like. And, and, you know, both of your portfolios really help to give uh, us comfort and our, and our co-lenders comfort. Hey, Ben, if I can jump in and just kind of put a, a shameless plug in there for, for what you guys have done for us. Um, that, that credibility, that global scope, you know us from other countries and you're able, therefore, to be comfortable with us um, in our ability to execute on our commitments in, in Chile. That's really important. And as a result of that, I think, you know, Natixis and Synetics were able to, to cooperate and put in place a very important piece for us of the puzzle, which is, you know, an, an acquisition financing piece um, that is very important for our investment committee. Um, but also for our developers on the ground, we have a tool to execute, and we have a tool to execute with at speed and scale, and that's the that's the challenge for us. And so, we can't really do that without the piece that Natixis brings to us in this case. That that's very kind of you, uh, Itor, and I are are blushing. Um, but we're we're looking forward to uh to to, to building on 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 the success together for for sure with with, with both of your your companies um and with 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 S and P and MetLife as as well. Um, I think we've got just a couple more minutes uh, for the panel. Um, just wanted to leave on a on a, a an outlook note, which is, um, you know, how are you taking all this intensive work that you've done to build um, uh, your initial PMGD projects and close your initial financing? And, and, and where do you see the PMGD space going forward um, in terms of its own growth, uh, your role in it? Um, just a couple ideas. You don't have to speak to all of this, but, uh, you know, I'm thinking organic uh, growth, 
um, uh, versus um, consolidation uh, in, in the space. Uh, cur curious as to how you see that. Well, if I may, uh, I think that uh, what is really important, and that was one of the, the, the main driver for the decision of investing in Chile, is that we believe in Red and that, uh, uh, and I hope we're right, we believe that uh, uh, PMGD, they will carry on, you know, they will carry on for, for a long time because it makes sense for uh, Chile. So uh, we want to develop more. We, we've got we've got portfolios, you know them, um, that will lead us to 200 megawatt of um, more or less by the end of 2021. But we want to develop more after that. And there's there's three ways we're going to carry on developing. The first one is that now we've got a, a 15 people uh, in, in Santiago doing well, developing our own project. So we will have, of course, it takes time, but we will have by a year, a year and a half, we will have a pipeline of project ready to build. There's another way, which is uh, uh, um, to have good relations with serious developers over there, local developers, co-developers. We, we will make some deals as we've done in the past with uh, some of the developers that are serious over there and you know them. Um, and the third one, we are open to uh, to to buy some existing portfolio. Let me say that's something we will we are not used to do normally because our DNA, as I said, when we started ten years ago, was to be a developer. Then we moved to uh, IPP, but uh, but but we're, we're still developers, so we don't really like to pay, you know, uh, a lot of money in order to buy other people development. But uh, if it makes sense in order to acquire size and carry on. Uh, more than happy to do that. And just to finish on my view on PMGD, uh, it's 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 a valid uh, a comment for for Chile, but also for all the geography we're working in. Uh, we need to add service to the grid. Let's say a uh, uh, photovoltaic in, uh, industry will 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 carry on if we're able to to help the grid uh, instead of uh, being a, a pain in the neck for them. So of course. It's it's everybody's talking about that, but we need to do that, and we've done that in the island already. We've got, you know, a lot of uh, installation in Puerto Rico and other islands. You need to have storage, and you need to have on Sanetics. You know that because we're we're we're, we're neighbors in Puerto Rico, you know, and uh, and we had to, we had to put some batteries and some grid regu uh, regulation over there, you know. And I think that Chile is going uh, into this direction also, and we we need as its sponsors, you know, to up the greed to let us carry on. I'd, I'd be glad to jump in and just say that um, at Synetics, we see the growth of our PMGD portfolio as being a, a kind of an important complement to Synetics's overall strategy of being a premier provider of solar power in Chile for the long term. We, we currently have 172 megawatts under construction um, in Atacama. We have another 160 megawatt plant um, about to enter uh, construction by the end of this year. So, you know, we are very interested in building big monumental landmark projects in the country, but we also see the importance of a network of distributed generation as well, providing grid stability and, and investment opportunity. Um, so I think Chile is very interesting in that there's both opportunities for both large scale and distributed gen right there. And um, we're, we're, we're very focused on growing both aspects of our business so that we can um, help the country meet its goals. Then if I may add to, to the comments, uh, I think from our side, from the financial uh, investor perspective, I would say we're looking forward to, to to supporting the sponsors in this, in, this, in this journey and continue to expand our exposure to the sector. Um, obviously, we're going to go look at the checkpoints, you know, in terms of uh, things going, working well, in terms of, you know, the DSAD being enacted adequately. Obviously, we have numerous elections coming in Chile. We have to see how that goes. Um, and also, you know, and as you know, our involvement so far in, in general in the industry is mainly construction phase. So I think our next next level, next stage would be the refinancing of that because refinancing risk was one of the risks that on the, from the financial financier perspective was out there for our committees. So I think it's important, you know, we work together to devise structures uh, for the long term. You know, we're typically a long-term investor, fixed rate investor, 
um, hopefully we can try to come to to break in into those those deals uh, those like kind of bonds perhaps private bonds uh, private placements uh, you know structures that are very very solid that that are able to cope with the potential variability of revenues and um, uh, yeah and change the prices um, the way uh, in different ways but the similar way to what the, sh the short term deals or the construction deals are, are dealing with and obviously trying to achieve you know let's say to meet triple B ratings uh, for them uh, you know to be to, to maximize our appetite in, in this in the sector. So I think those are, from our, our standpoint, the, the, key, the key things going forward for the sector. Excellent. I appreciate those. Um, I'm looking at the time and, and yeah. noticing that we may be a few minutes over. Uh, Aitor, did you have any closing? Yeah, no, no, I, I, I think we're really running uh, out of time. So I think we could be talking for hours on, on PMGD. We, we all have invested a lot a lot of time on, on this. So probably we have a lot of thoughts to, to share with, uh, with the audience. but we're constrained by time, so I, I think we will have to um, stop here. So I will just do thanks again to, um, our panelists and, and partners of Natixis in the PMGD um, effort, you know, Candela, Thierry, David, Juan Pablo. Thanks a lot uh, for joining today and also for uh, working together in, in PMGD in the past and, and hopefully also in the in the future. So um, I think the panel was uh, was an interesting panel that in for the audience to see that you know there are situations, country opportunities in, in Latin America, and Latin America has a huge uh, need for infrastructure, and 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 it's opened a lot of opportunities for everybody uh, who are interested in the infrastructure asset class. Here we have an example of of, of a country like Chile that is providing um, regulatory stability, economic stability that is provided in certain niche sectors like this one, um, a decent uh, risk return. Um, and, and, and on top of that, uh, it's, it's a pretty smart and innovative uh, regime that the Chileans have put forward that I'm sure could be, uh, you know, could be replicated in, in other parts of the world. So um, I'm sure that, um, the panel will has been uh, fantastic. So thanks a lot, uh, everybody, for, for your time and um, look forward to with with all of you okay thank you thank you thank you all bye appreciate thank it you. bye, bye.